Hi everyone, welcome to this video on vectors. This is the first video in the series on ve vectors for the P1 syllabus. In this video we're going to be looking at the first two bullet points using the standard notation for vectors, talking about all those, and carrying out addition and subtraction of vectors and multiplication of a vector by a scalar, and interpreting these operations in geometrical terms. So it's just worth noting here the definition of vector and scalar, so we're going to be talking about that in this video. Um, Second video, we'll talk about unit displacement and position vectors. The third video, we'll talk about magnitude of a vector. And the final video, we'll be talking about the scalar product or the dot product, which is the most common kind of question that you're going to get in the exam, uh, talking about the angle between two vectors and how we can use the scalar product to, to find that out. So let's talk about the notation first and the definition. A vector is just a straight line that has length and direction. So we're not just talking about uh, saying like going east. That's uh, certainly a direction that doesn't have any definite length. Uh, but if we say east uh, 30 kilometers, then that's a vector. Okay, so it's a line segment that with length and direction. You can see on the little diagram here, we've got a starting point A and an ending point B. And we've got an arrow here to indicate which way we're going. Obviously, the vector from A to B is different from the vector from B to A. So the arrow is important. So there's one way of writing the vector, A to B with a little arrow over the top, showing we're going from point A to point B. Another way of writing the vector is a little letter here, A, with a little squiggle under it. That's the way that we'd write it on our exam uh, when we're writing it. Uh, in the exam paper, you'll see that vectors are written in bold. Okay, So they'll appear in bold type so that they distinguish themselves from scalars, which are just numbers. Okay, So that's the definition of a scalar, it's just a number. So uh, we can distinguish between vectors and scalars in exams. Vectors are written in bold. Okay, another way that we write vectors is like this. Now you can see we've got some uh, kind of brackets here. Uh, kind of looks like a fraction, but it's not. Uh, 4 minus 3. The top number here represents how many units we go to the right or left, positive or negative. The bottom number tells us how many units we go up or down. If it's positive, we go up. If it's negative, we go down. So this vector from A to B, you can see we've gone across four units and down three. So this vector from A to B is the same as four minus three. So there's a few ways of writing vectors. Vectors are extremely handy when we start looking at three-dimensional objects and shapes and getting around three dimensions. So it's important to define uh, these unit vectors. We're going to talk more about what unit vectors are in the next video, but here I just want to show you the unit vectors. They are the vectors that are one unit long, parallel to the x, y, and z axes. You can see here. So the letters that we use for those unit vectors are i, j, and k. So in three dimensions, i is just one, zero, zero. So one unit along the x, zero along y, and zero along z. So the vector we had from the previous page was just 4i minus 3j, okay? Four units along the x-axis, and then three minus three units along the y-axis. So let's look at the geometry now of adding, subtracting, and multiplying vectors. A and B here, A is the vector 4, 0, B is the vector 2, 6. If we add those two together, we get what we call a resultant vector. So you can kind of align this to our forces. If we've got a force acting this way and a force acting in this direction, then this is the resultant force, A plus B. Pretty simply, all you do is just add the top numbers and add the bottom numbers to get the resultant vector. So you see A plus B is 6, 6. So that's 6 to the right and 6 up. If we subtract two vectors, it's a little bit trickier. If we go A minus B, really what we're doing here is we're saying A plus negative B. That's the same as A minus B. So we're starting with the vector A and we're adding on the negative of the vector B. So if B is 5, 7, then negative B is negative 5, negative 7. You can see I've drawn negative B over here. So negative 5, so that means back 5, negative 7, down 7. So there's the resultant. We have A, then from the end of A we add on B. 
in this case add on negative b and we get a minus b. Algebraically it's real simple. a minus b, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So it's really easy to do algebraically, it's adding and subtracting, but you need to know what it looks like as well. Lastly, we're just looking here at the effect of multiplying a vector by a scalar, that is, by a constant. So if we just take the vector c, which is 1 minus 1, if we multiply that vector by 3, you see we get a vector that is 3 times the length going in the same direction. The vector a, which is 2, 1, 2a is twice the length going in the same direction, so it's parallel to the first original vector. Here's the vector b which is 0 minus 4 minus a half b. So this one's a little bit trickier. A half b means it's half the length, as you can see. The negative means it's going in the opposite direction. So it's important to understand what geometrically what's happening to a vector when you multiply it by a number. So those three examples kind of show you what's going on. And these same ideas work for vectors in three dimensions. So if we have a vector in three dimensions, we multiply it by two, we'll get a vector that's twice as long in the same direction.